Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landa. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about Topamax or Topramate. This is a drug that was first approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 1996 for treatment of various forms of epilepsy, and then in 2004 for prevention of migraine headaches, not for the treatment of migraine headaches, but for their prevention. It comes in a variety of different forms. It comes in 25 milligrams, 50, 100, and 200 milligrams, or sprinkles that you can add to food, 15 milligrams and 25 milligrams. It's used for epilepsy either as a sole therapy or as an add-on therapy. We call it adjunctive therapy. In those individuals over age two, could be used for partial onset epilepsy or the generalized epilepsy, the tonic-clonic movement type epilepsy. Well, the dose varies with the condition and with the person's age. So in those individuals who it's used as sole therapy in epilepsy, who are at least 10 years of age, the starting dose is 25 milligrams twice a day for the first week. Second week, it's 50 milligrams twice a day. Third week, 75 milligrams twice a day. Fourth week, 100 milligrams twice a day. Fifth week, 150 milligrams twice a day. And then the sixth week, you achieve the goal of 200 milligrams twice a day. Well, if a person is younger, let's say between ages two and nine, start off at just 25 milligrams one time a day and more gradually increase the dose. If we're using it as adjunctive therapy in people over age 17 and they have partial epilepsy, the goal is to achieve a treatment of between 200 and 400 milligrams per day. That's in divided doses, half morning, half night. If, on the other hand, the person has generalized epilepsy, typically it's going to be 400 milligrams total dose per day, half morning, half night. Now, on the other hand, if what we're treating is migraine headache and we're trying to reduce the frequency, we're using it as a preventative or a prophylactic therapy, then in those people over age 12, the goal is 100 milligrams a day in divided doses. So we start with 25 milligrams just at night and then 25 milligrams twice a day. Then week three is 25 milligrams in the morning and 50 milligrams at night. And week four, we're 50 milligrams twice a day. So how does it work? Well, let's start off with migraine. So let's say you have migraine. Average would be about five and a half migraine episodes per month. And let's say we achieve the goal of 100 milligram total dose per day, half morning, half night. We're going to reduce that number by about two. So we've gone from five and a half migraines to three and a half migraines. That's what the Topamax on average is going to do. If we doubled the dose, we wouldn't have any greater benefit now, if we'd use just the placebo instead of the medicine, we'd reduce the number of migraines by about one, so we would still have about four and a half migraines per month. On the other hand, if we talk about epilepsy, well, and those people who are receiving the treatment as sole therapy, and if we look at people who have, let's say, between one and three seizures per month, well, if we get them on the 400 milligram dose, we're going to find a significant reduction in the number of epileptic seizures. If we use a lower dose, because a person can't tolerate the full dose, then we're going to have less improvement. Well, it's also important to realize that about 40%, 40% of the people are not going to be able to achieve the recommended dose. Now, if we use it as adjunctive therapy, a person's already taken several medicines, let's say, and we add either topramate or we add a placebo, and we follow them along, yes, indeed, we're going to have about a 40 to 50% reduction in the number of partial onset seizures. Well, that sounds pretty good. Irrespective of the dose, 400 milligrams, 600 milligrams, 800, 1,000 milligrams a day. But that's only going to be a 40 to 50% reduction in the number in about 40 to 50% of the people if we don't even achieve that dose, the 400 milligrams, let's say we just get to 200 milligrams, still in about one in four individuals, we're going to be able to cause about a 50% reduction in the number of seizures. And if we use it for the generalized tonic-clonic seizures, well, we're going to have about a 50% reduction again. But the problem with all of these statistics is they come from the drug companies. They come from studies that drug companies had something to do with. We don't have really significant independent numbers. So 
Another problem with the drug is it's very frequently used off-label for a wide variety of different disorders, far beyond what the Food and Drug Administration has approved, and far beyond what we have medical information to say, hey, the drug really works. So for instance, people commonly use this drug off-label, no good evidence, for alcohol dependence or chronic low back pain or diabetic neuropathy or borderline personality disorder or post-traumatic stress disorder, the eating disorders, essential tremor, cocaine dependence, for smoking cessation, for cluster headaches, for nocturnal eating disorder, for people with bipolar disorder, for people who have obesity. And as a matter of fact, in 2012, the FDA approved a combination of topramate with fetamine. They call it quismia. And this drug supposedly is going to be able to reduce the weight. Well, the admonition the FDA came up with is if you lose less than 3% of your body weight by three months, then you should stop the therapy. And the Endocrine Society, they evaluated a large number of patients who were either obese or overweight in 2016. And they said that in a treatment of four months, people could lose about 12 pounds more than they did with a placebo we had about a sevenfold greater likelihood of losing significant body weight, at least 10% of the body weight. But they also had about a twofold increase in likelihood of stopping the pill because of some unwanted problem. Now, the drug has also gained some traction as an add on in people who have bipolar disorder. A lot of people with bipolar disorder being treated with antipsychotics, drugs like Cyprexa or Abilify or. Seroquel or Respiradol, all of those drugs have a tendency to be associated with weight gain and with little evidence. People are saying, well, if we add some topramate, maybe we're going to be able to reduce the likelihood of the weight gain. Well, unfortunately, that probably doesn't seem to be the case. And the Cochrane collaboration studied it and said, hey, the drug seems to be only as good as a placebo for the mania of bipolar disorder. So no more effective than adding a placebo. So you should take the medicine either with or without food, but it has a bitter taste, so you don't break the tablet. If you use the sprinkles, you can swallow them whole, or you can sprinkle on a teaspoon of some soft food, and you swallow it without chewing it. You swallow it immediately after mixing. There's some interaction with other kind of anti-epilepsy medicine. So if you're taking it with Dilantin, Dilantin is going to decrease the concentration of the bloodstream of the Topramax by about 50%, or if you take it with Tegretol, it reduces the amount of Topamax by about 40%. On the other hand, if you take it with either Valproate or Lamictal, it's only a 10 to 15% reduction in the concentration. Phenobarbital doesn't change it at all. There are some interactions that are important. If you take it with a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, drug like Diamox, that has a tendency to cause perhaps some kidney stones, if it causes a metabolic acidosis. And if you take it with a central nervous system depressant, if you take it with alcohol, extreme caution is necessary because of the potential for Topramax to lead to central nervous system depression and other kind of cognitive and neurologic side effects. If you're taking it with a birth control pill that contains estrogen, it's going to decrease the concentration of estrogen, especially if the dose of Topramax is at least 200 milligrams a day, so it's going to decrease the efficiency or efficacy of the birth control pill and might lead to some spotting. It also seems that hydrochlorothiazide, HCTZ, can increase the concentration of Topamax by about 25%. So that might require a little bit lower dose of the Topamax. And you have to have caution if you're taking it with lithium or amitriptyline or if you're taking it with metformin. Now, it has a lot of side effects, and the side effects are relatively frequent, so it causes some numbness and tingling in about 40 to 50 percent of the people who take the drug, and at least 10 percent of the people are going to have a variety of other symptoms, and those symptoms include fatigue and dizziness and ataxia, peculiar walking, walking like you've had too much alcohol, speech difficulties, the eyes going back and forth visual abnormalities, or seeing double, or nausea, or feeling tired, or have some motor slowing, you just don't seem to be getting along as well, 
anorexia, kills your appetite, have difficulty concentrating, difficulty with memory, confusion. Some people hyperventilate or have arrhythmias or develop kidney stones or osteoporosis or can develop fractures. And if you take the dose before you've attained your full growth, full height growth, well, it can impact upon your future height. It makes you shorter. Well, other side effects, it can cause amnesia, it can cause tremors, abnormal taste sensation, hair loss, can cause constipation and muscle pain, and cause cognitive problems. And that's a particular issue with this drug. So it can cause somnolence and fatigue, and cause behavioral problems, cause depression, cause an altered mood cause confusion and psychomotor slowing and difficulty concentrating and attention, difficulty with memory, difficulty with speech and language and word finding. So it's difficult to operate heavy machinery, drive a car. And it's so bad that the drug colloquially has been referred to as Stupamax or Dopamax because of its impact on your neurocognitive functions. Well, it can cause the blood pressure to go up or down by at least 20 points, cause the heart rate to go up or down by 30 points. In some individuals, it can lead to suicidal thoughts and behavior, more common with epilepsy than with migraine headache. It can cause some problems with glaucoma, especially if a person has angle closure glaucoma, narrow angle. It can cause some problems with visual loss. You should be careful if you're taking the drug, if you have any visual abnormality, decrease in your visual fields, you have some acute pain in your eye, typically that's going to occur within the first month of therapy. It can cause metabolic acidosis, so periodically you need some blood tests, especially if you happen to have kidney disease or you're on some kind of peculiar diet, maybe a keto diet or you have diarrhea or you have some respiratory disease, it can lead to kidney stones if you're taking it with other anhy carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. That occurs in about 7% of pediatric patients, followed for about a year, causes metabolic acidosis. Well, it can increase the ammonia level and lead to an encephalopathy inside the brain, cause a significant problem, especially if you happen to be taking it with valproic acid. Also know that it can cause the body temperature to decrease. And if you happen to be a pregnant woman and you're taking it, that increases the risk for a cleft lip, cleft palate, and delivering a, an infant that's small for gestational age. And it can increase the risk of bleeding in about 5% of the people, especially if you happen to be on a blood thinner or you happen to be taking aspirin or non or anti-inflammatory disease. Might be simply a nosebleed or bleeding into the skin, we call it ecchymosis. But it also might be increased bleeding from around the teeth or bleeding into the urine or even menstrual bleeding. And interestingly, at least in animal experiments, not in humans, but in animal experiments, seems to increase the number of bladder tumors and smooth muscle tumors. Well, if you're stopping the medicine, you have to be very careful and you slowly decrease the dose of the medicine so you don't increase the likelihood of having an epileptic seizure. If you take the drug, you need periodic blood tests, and the blood tests for should, should be for your bicarbonate level and your chloride level, the ammonia level, phosphorus, alkaline phosphatase, and potassium, your kidney function, the BUN and creatinine, uric acid, and your blood proteins. You should take it in pregnancy only if the benefits significantly outweigh the risks, because we know that there's the potential for fetal harm, decrease in the fetal growth, there's an increase in the fetal death rate. Premature labor occurs. First trimester exposure, we have a 16-fold increase in the cleft lip and cleft palate. So if a woman is not planning to become pregnant and is taking the drug, a person should be on some kind of contraception. But remember, since it interferes with estrogen, well, a different kind of contraception. How about breastfeeding? Well, it seems that it's in the breast milk at about the same level. It's in the plasma and causes some diarrhea and some somnolence in the children. So what about kidney function? Well, if your kidney function is less than 70 milliliters, uh, the GFR is less than 70, well, that means that significant less clearance is going to occur. 
So probably you have to reduce the dose by about a half. And, and the creatinine clearance of 70 or less is very common in people, once they get to be age 65, even if there's nothing else wrong with them, so the dose has to be adjusted depending on the age. Now, if you happen to be receiving hemodialysis, that's going to take the drug away, and the clearance is going to be increased by about four to six fold, so you might have to take more. And if you happen to have moderate to severe liver impairment, it's going to decrease the clearance by about 25% or so. So again, caution is necessary. You can overdose on the medicine. If you overdose on the medicine, it's going to make you drowsy and lethargic. It's going to decrease the blood pressure, cause speech disturbances, maybe cause double vision or blurred vision, impaired thinking, depression, abnormal coordination, and can lead to convulsions. Now, typically people recover relatively few deaths. The way the drug works, it works on a variety of channels inside the system. So the way sodium gets in and out of the cells, or the way calcium gets in and out of the cells, and it seems to augment the effect of the GABA-A, the gamma aminobenzoic acid, it seems to work also in the way the brain cells might be pruned in newborns. It doesn't produce the apoptosis or the death of the brain cells that some of the other anti-epileptic medicines cause, which could be good or could be bad, depending. The peak absorption, if you take the pill orally, is going to be about two hours. 80% of the medicine is going to be bioavailable. The half-life of the drug is about 21 hours. The steady state's reached after about four days, somewhere between 20 and 40 percent going to be bound to the plasma proteins. About 70 percent of the drug is going to be excreted unchanged in the urine. About 30 percent is going to be extensively metabolized. It was discovered in 1979 by McNeil Pharmaceuticals. It became a generic drug in 2006 cost of the drug if you paid cash for a month worth of therapy, 50 milligram tablets twice a day, well, it would be somewhere between 40 and $60, except if you go to CVS or Walmart, it's $200. If you have a coupon from GoodRx, it's only $3 to $10, except at CVS and Walgreens where it's $55. The trade name, if you want the brand name, it's going to cost you somewhere between $725 and $750. So there you have it. Topamax, nothing spectacular, plenty of side effects, used a lot for reasons that are not supported by a lot of good evidence. Number of cognitive problems, number of learning problems, that's why it got the name Stupamax or Dopamax. So, unimpressive. I appreciate you watching, thank you. If you have any questions about the show, email us. If you enjoyed the show, tell a friend. Maybe consider subscribing. That way you'll be kept up to date with all of the new shows as we post them. Anyway, appreciate your time. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.